In this video, we're going to see how to create a custom keyboard, which is also wireless and with low current consumption, so it can run on battery for a long time. First, we're going to make a small prototype keyboard on a breadboard, which then can be scaled up to create any size keyboard you want using the same basic wiring and code. The two main components for this project are the two microcontrollers. One that is on the transmitter side, where all the buttons will be connected to, and one on the receiver side, which will be connected to the computer. Now to communicate between these two microcontrollers, we will be using an RF model. The NRF24L01, which uses radio signals for the wireless communication. For the receiver side, it doesn't really matter which microcontroller you use, since it will be connected to the PC using USB. However, it needs to have HID support to be able to control the PC easily. I have chosen the Pro Micro, but any Atomega 32U4 boards will be fine as well. Now for the transmitter side, we need to have a microcontroller that consumes very small amount of current, so we can run it on battery for a long time. This makes the Atini microcontrollers perfect for this. I have chosen the Atini 84, but you can also use the Atini 85, Atini 88, or any microcontroller that draws small amount of current, which also meets the number of input pins needed for the number of buttons you're going to use. You also, of course, need some sort of buttons. For the prototype version, we are only going to use three buttons, but you can use any number of buttons you want. For the battery, I have chosen the CR2450 coin battery, which provides 3 volts and has a capacity of 500 milliamp hour. You also need this battery holder. Since the voltage of a battery changes over time, we need a voltage regulator. For this project, we need a 3.3 volts voltage regulator. I have chosen the MCP1700 with two capacitors soldered directly on it to keep the signal smooth. And that's pretty much all the components that you will need. For the wiring for this project, here is the wiring diagram for the transmitter side. And this is for the receiver side. Once you have wired everything together, now we just need to upload the code. You can find the link to the code in the video description. You need to install the RF24 library. You can easily do this using the Arduino library manager. Open it by going to tools, manage libraries. Then just search for RF24 and install the RF24 library by TMRH20. I have made it very easy for you to add buttons and choose what each button does when they are pressed. There are only two things you need to change. First, the maximum number of shortcut keys which is how many keys can be pressed at the same time for each button. Second, what each button does. You can easily add buttons and assign each button a sequence of keys using this array. The first item is the pin number of where the button is connected to your microcontroller, then a string of integers separated by spaces. You can get the integer value of every key using an ASCII table, such as this one. For example, for the letter P, it is represented by 80 and the shift key represented by 129. So this way you can make any shortcut or key sequences very easily. Just assign each button a pin number and choose the keys for that button, separated by spaces. For example, here I have chosen the first button to write PWR and the second button to copy by pressing the Ctrl and C key and the third to paste by pressing the Ctrl and V key. Once you've chosen the correct pins and assigned each button a character or shortcut, just upload the code for both the microcontrollers, the transmitter and the receiver. You don't need to make any changes to the receiver code, just upload that straight away. So now, when you connect the battery to the transmitter and connect the receiver to the computer, when you press each button, the corresponding keys are triggered. So when I press the first key, PWR is written, and the copy and paste buttons work as you would expect. And for this setup, having the transmitter as the Atini 84 with the NRF24L01 model 
they are only consuming a total current of 1.284 milliamps. Which means when using the CR2450 coin battery with 500 milliamp hour capacity, the keyboard will last for 16 days if you have it always on. However, in practice, this will last for at least 30 days, as with any wireless device, you turn it off when it's not in use. So 30 plus days from a single coin battery is actually not bad at all. Now you can always of course use a rechargeable battery or a bigger battery if needed, or simply use two of the same coin battery in parallel to double the capacity if required. Now it is up to you to choose how many buttons you want on your keyboard and simply make the same connections and make a small adjustment in the code to make any kind of keyboard you want. And if you have a 3D printer, you can design a case for it, add a switch, use proper keyboard switches, and just like that, you have a nice custom wireless keyboard. I ended up using the Atani88 with MX Cherry switches. First, I started by soldering wires to each button with a solid core wire on the other end to act like male header pins. Then using the voltage regulator, I used the strip board and female header pins to connect everything together. For the receiver, I just used a PCB board with some female header pins and wires to connect a microcontroller and the RF model together. I also made these keycaps which works great. You can find all 3D models in the description as well. So now you can simply have the receiver microcontroller always plugged in at the back of your computer and use the switch on the keyboard to turn it on when you want to use it. And just like that, very easily, you can make a custom wireless keyboard. Comment below if there is any project you want me to tackle next, it could be anything. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed or found this video useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next project.